I went to see a patient here and, and as I started to think about how to care for this patient for asthma, I thought, geez, I think there's these new guidelines out from the National Heart and Lung Blood Institute. I couldn't find the guidelines, but I sort of vaguely knew what I needed to do. I couldn't find anybody to help me to do the peak flows. I ended up getting through as we usually do. But it took a long time and I thought, this is crazy. So we did a chart review and we looked at the key outcomes that people said we needed to track. And whether they had an action plan or a school plan, whether they had gotten a flu vaccine. And we showed that we were doing a horrible job. We gathered everybody together and said, how could we do it differently? All I really wanted was a stand so I could put the peak flow. But then I had some people, and this is what made it different, I had people around me who believed in me and believed in the project, more importantly, and said, you know, I think instead of a stamp, why don't we just change the encounter forms? And you know what, Tori, you don't need to do that peak flow. What about the CNAs doing it? So then we were starting to engage people in this process. It became something bigger. I started here as a medical director in 1998, and part of my job was to do some kind of quality improvement. The first thing we did was, uh, in trying to improve our diabetes care, was to look at what the standards were. And then we saw, whoa, we've got some improvement needed here. And then we disseminated the results to our doctors who, of course, didn't believe it. They thought that they were doing just fine. Um, but then they realized when the data was in front of them that, oh, there was room for improvement. We saw that we can, you know, by paying attention to these things, we could really um, do a better job. If you don't have a clear aim, if you can't state in a sentence or two what you want to do, you're never going to bring somebody along with you. Okay, how about a big breath? So we were able to get all of us together and say, okay, let's be specific. What do we want to do? We want to improve flu vaccine rates. And that was something internal medicine could buy, family practice could buy. So we tried to figure out what the messages were that would bring other people on board, which would then help us with our overall project. When I have our staff meetings, I have a graph which I'll show, and there's not any doctor's names in particular, but their secret code number, which only they know. So they can look and see how they're doing compared to the group, because I think competition helps. Most people always thought they did better than what the um, audit showed, but I think mostly they're, they're happy with it because it helps them do a better job. And I think we're all in it to do a better job. The whole point of this is to try to make it easy. The staff is very actively interested in competing with other uh, practices that are in the consortium because when we, we go to these meetings, you want to be the best. We have a graph that lists the, the basic parameters of the performance and the outcome data that's being collected. And when you get at or above the national benchmark, then you get a gold star. Not bonuses, not reimbursement, but a gold star was incredibly effective to, to get the staff involved with it. It works? Yeah. We all here want to feel like we're doing better for our patients. And uh, measurement really does help. And that, again, is what shook us up at the beginning, and it shakes people now. Now, acting on that is not necessarily easy. Um, and there's a limit to how much one doc can do using his own or her own memory um, and pen and chart. But we're able to show that you can improve some things that way um, with commitment and then the tools to become more organized and do it. I think to get improved outcomes, you really need to create systems in place to make it easy for providers to do the right thing. And, and by creating, you know, types of flow sheets for diabetes, we have a flow sheet for diabetes, it makes it, it makes the life of the provider easier to make sure that the patient is receiving standard of care. We've done the same thing with asthma by implementing our asthma action plan and the chart. And then really we worked individually with those patients and get them standard of care. When we were developing our uh, acute care sheet, that went through multiple iterations before we got to the final one that we now send to the printer. And that was done using this uh, cycle of improvement until you reach the goal that, uh, that you're looking for. All of our processes are recorded electronically on a format that has the ability to capture data. And when data is captured, uh, then it's reportable. Do we have any idea when uh, we're going to reduce scans? The first query we did, we found we actually treated women with lung cancer less aggressively than we did men. And so we came back and, and discussed that and changed our behavior altogether. 
it was a real eye-opening experience that has created actionable knowledge. It was not something we wanted to see, but it's something that was very important for our patients. Our goal with electronic information management is knowledge. It's knowledge that changes behavior. When we started in year 2000, our average hemoglobin A1C for the clinic was 9.4. At that time, we had 1,300 diabetic. In 2004, we had 2,150 diabetic with an average hemoglobin A1C of 7.6. You know, that is impact. I mean, when you see, if you know that with every drop in one percentage point in hemoglobin A1C, you reduce mortality and morbidity by 20%, having a drop of, you know, almost two percentage point, that's a tremendous impact on these people's lives. And I think that, that to me is very rewarding. That is very rewarding. Since we employed, started to employ all of our quality indicators and our quality mechanisms, it's changed everything for us. It's changed our attitude. It's changed our communication uh, internally because we and always looking for new ways of doing things. And people come to us all the time internally and say, why don't we measure this or that? And when it does, it's, it's like always renewing. This is the best of all times for me because I know I'm doing something that's meaningful. I know I'm doing something that's measurable. We can make a change in our own practice, how we practice personally uh, every day in the quality of our care that we give our patients. It changes our lives. It does get us up in the morning.